Hey everybody, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall in the last series, we did Pong, which if you haven't checked that out, you definitely should because it'll be a great basis for this next series that we're going to be doing, which is Snake. And so just a little sneak peek, this is what we will be building in this series. And so as you get more food, you grow. And then if you run into yourself, you die. So this is going to be the game that we'll be making. And I don't have the menu screen up, but that's going to be one of the first things that we'll be working on. Okay, so in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up the window and the main game loop and everything. And I'm going to go very quickly over all that stuff because I covered it in much greater depth in the last series. So I'll have a link to that if you want to get a little bit more details about what's going on. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into IntelliJ. So I have this open right here. And then I'm going to do a new project. So then I'm going to do a Java project and I'm using Java version 11 right here. So I'll hit next, next, I'm going to call this snake and I'm going to store this inside my C dev Java projects. And then we'll do a new folder in here. So I'll hit new folder and we'll call this snake. There we go. And this is the folder we'll use. Okay, cool. Then finish. And I'm going to hit new window. So move this out of the way. Okay, and so once we got our new window up, we can go into source and we'll hit new Java class and we will create a main class, which is where uh, the entry point of our game will be. So we'll put our main function in here. And this is just basic Java syntax just like that. And I'm going to create one more new class and we will call this window. And this is where we're going to be building the window and everything. And so this window class is actually going to be extending a couple of other classes uh, because we need to use Java's graphics library to build the basic window for us and everything. It makes everything much easier. So we'll extend JFrame and we will implement runnable. That way we can run this in a separate thread. And then it says we need to import this class. So we'll import JFrame. And then we need to implement the runnable method. So we will implement that. So there we go. So inside this run method is where our main game loop is going to be just like our old uh, tutorial. So I'm going to create one more new class that we'll need for that game loop. We'll call this time. And then this time class will be very simple. Just get the time that we've had since the game has started. So we'll say public static double time started equals system dot nano time. This is just like the last series, if you remember, and then we'll say public static double get time. And then we will return system. We'll wrap this in parentheses system dot nano time minus time started times one e to the minus nine. And that will give us the time in seconds since the game window has started. Okay. And so then back over to our window class and we will have a couple more methods. So inside we'll create a constructor window. And then inside this constructor, we'll take the width. We'll take the height. We'll take the title. There we go. And then we'll just uh, do the basic methods that we got to do. So set size, width, height, and this is all inherited from the JFrame. So that's where we're getting all these methods from. Set title. We'll set it to whatever title is passed in. We'll set resizable to false. And then we will set visible to true. And we'll set the default close operation. That way we can actually close it. And this will just be JFrame.exit on close. Okay. And so that sets up the basic window. Let's go into our main class and actually create that window just to make sure everything's working. So we'll say window equals a new window. And before I go and just put random numbers in there, I'm going to create the constants class as well. So we'll make our lives easier in the long run. So put in here public static final int, and this will be the screen width. And I'm going to do mine a little bit bigger for this one. I'm going to do 1320 by 1080. You can set it to whatever uh, size fits your screen best. So, and then I'll do screen height and we'll set this to 1080. And then we'll say uh, the title. So string uh, screen title. And this is just gonna be the title that's gonna pop up 
on our window and I'll call that snake. Okay, so then we'll go back into here and then we can just pass in all those parameters. So we'll say screen width, screen height, and screen title. Nice, simple, cool. And then we'll get a thread going. So we'll say thread T1 or thread thread equals new thread. And we will pass in that window, which is uh, implements runnable so we can use that as a thread. And then we'll just simply say thread.start. Okay, and then this should pop up a new window with absolutely nothing going on. Let's see if this works. So we'll go over to here, we'll say run, and then we'll hit run and hit main. And then after this, IntelliJ remembers this that we can do a keyboard shortcut. So we see we get the snake class, and this is actually a bit too big for me. So I'm gonna change those constants real quick. I'll do 800 by 600. Here we go, 800 and 600. So this is a much better size. Okay, there we go, that looks good. And then you see it says snake up here. We can minimize, we can bring it back up, we can move the window. We can't resize it because we set that to false and then we can close the window. Cool, let's set up the game loop real quick too, just so that we have that working and we can just use this right off the bat, which should be pretty simple. It's basically, it's exactly the same thing we did in the last tutorial. So this is a lot of the same stuff. Um, so we'll have a double last frame time, set that to zero initially, and then we'll say uh, we have to wrap this in a try just in case we want to uh, make the thread sleep, which we can use to do some debugging and stuff. So we'll do a try catch and we'll say exception E and then we'll just print the stack trace if we get an exception. And then inside of here, we'll say while is running. And let's create a variable real quick just so that we can keep track of when it is running. So we'll say boolean is running equals true by default. Okay, and we'll actually set that inside of the constructor instead of setting it up there. So down here is running equals true by default. There we go. So while is running, we'll say double time equals time dot get time. And then we will say double delta time equals time minus last frame time. And then we can say last frame time equals time, and then we can call update with our delta time. Okay, and let's create that update method real quick. So we'll have a public void update, and we'll take in a double DT for delta time. We're also gonna need a draw method, so we will create a public void draw, and we'll take in a graphics object there. We'll import that, alt enter, okay. And then we're gonna do the same simple double buffering technique that we did last time. So inside of this update method, uh, we will call the draw. So first what we're gonna do, we're gonna create an off-screen graphics image that we will draw everything to. And then we will call draw with that off-screen image and then we'll draw the actual image to our actual window. So that might've sounded a little bit confusing. We'll just say image double buffer image equals, and then we'll create an image, the width and the height of our window. So we can say get width and get height. This is just the width and the height of our window. So we're creating an image that's the same width, same height as our window, but you can't see it. It's completely off screen. Okay, and then we'll say graphics, double buffer graphics equals, and then we'll say the image. So the double buffer image dot get graphics. Okay, so now we have the graphics handle for that image, which we will pass to our draw method. So this way, we are drawing everything off screen and then once everything is drawn, so we after we draw everything, we'll say get graphics, which is the Windows actual graphics dot draw image. And then we'll do, give it the double buffer image. And then we'll say zero zero, which is the X, Y coordinate. And then this is the image observer. Okay. And so that should draw everything for us. We can test that. We will simply clear the screen color in here. So we'll say graphics 2D g2 equals and then we will cast our graphics object to a 2d object and then we'll say cut set the color we'll do color dot black if i can type right there we go color dot black and then we will say g2 dot fill rect and we will do zero zero get width get height which will fill the window with the color black so let's see if this worked out for us and as you see, we get a black window. So now we have our double buffering done, we have our game loop up and running, and we have a window handler. So this is all good, and we are in a good position to start the tutorial. 
In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a simple scene manager. If you remember from the last series, we had trouble switching between the main menu state and the game state. So in the next uh, next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to get that up and running first. And we're going to have a, an extendable scene object, which is what is going to be drawn inside of here. And then we can have two different classes that extend that scene object. And instead of creating an entirely new window when we want to switch from a main menu to the game loop, we'll just simply switch the class that we're drawing. So it all makes sense in the next tutorial and it will be a much better method. We shouldn't be creating a new window when we need to do that stuff too anyways. And it's uh, just a better overall technique for doing this type of stuff. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. See you.